Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my hardware guide series, and today we're going to be talking about the TurboGrafx-16 and the CD attachment. So, <clears throat> what we have here is a TurboGrafx-16, uh, and it's currently in the hard shell. Um, I also have the CD drive with it as well. But first off, to get everything, to get more table room, I'm going to go over the turbo stick. This is a recent addition to my collection. I'm very, very happy to have it. Um, it is just, you know, your, your basic arcade stick. It is a ball and socket design. As you can tell, there are no clicks. It's so there's just four membranes in each of the cardinal directions. There's just more membranes here. Clicky's right here. Um, slow is clicky and then more membranes. And then there's the uh, turbo adjustment uh, sliders. Fairly nice long cord for this. Um, there's the end of the plug and stuff. Uh, it is not necessary to have this particular uh, <clears throat> controller for uh, owning the system or, or like, you know, as an essential, but this is very, very nice, especially considering the number of shmups that are available on the system. All right, now to get to this. I might have to adjust the camera a little bit. Something, ice. Okay, whatever. So this is a TurboGrafx-16 with a CD drive. Now the CD drive, or CD2 as some people like to call it, that can come off. My TurboGrafx-16 is actually docked in the back here, um, and you can tell it's like where it kind of separates, but there's a part that sticks in. My pins are a little bit messed up, so I'm not gonna be taking it apart, um, but here's the TurboGrafx-16. I also 3D printed a fake cue card to basically act as a dust blocker, but when you're turning this on, you have to turn on both things. Um, so AV, you've got some RF right here for channel 3 and channel 4, and then back here we have the basic RCA plugs with a what 11 volt DC power in. Um, now, when the bottom of that switch, when the bottom switch was used, like this guy right here, you heard a loud noise. That's that bar right there keeping you from un from accidentally unlocking the docking station. Um, <clears throat> so a few things to realize. When you're getting a TurboGrafx-16, if the capacitors have not already been replaced, you will probably want to replace them in the TurboGrafx-16. When you're getting a dock, you'll want to replace the capacitors in the dock as well. And you'll want to replace the capacitors in this thing as well, this, the actual CD drive. Um, it is difficult, time consuming, and expensive. Um, now there is a cover that usually goes on the back of this. I've since lost it. Um, I have no idea where it is. This actually acts as a standalone CD player. This was my very first CD player that I owned. Um, also, there's a little side thing here that raises that little nodule so that when you're when you have this thing slid back in, it locks in right there where that screw is, and you won't accidentally undock your CD drive. Also, on the CD unit itself, there is something else that is problematic. I know it seems like a lot to go through to actually own one of these systems. There is a uh, there is a white gear. It's called the white middle gear. Thank goodness that there are stores out there that are finding these these things and reproducing them and stuff like that. That gear is made of a plastic that over time it likes to swell and then it jams. So then suddenly the drive just doesn't work anymore. You have to replace that as well. Um, this is the original power adapter for the TurboGrafx-16 by itself. <clears throat> now the cool thing about this is this plug let me get this out here, can fit 
the CD player, because this thing doesn't have batteries. It doesn't work on its own. It has to have power. And it has a line out and all this other stuff. Um, and also has a headphone jack right there. This plug, even though it's meant for this device, NEC was very smart and figured out that, hey, instead of people throwing these things away and creating a lot of e-waste and stuff, um, let's go ahead and make it power the CD drive. And that was a great thing for them to do. It was uh, not necessary, but um, very, very, very appreciated. Go ahead and dock that back. Now, here is a normal turbo pad. The controller length is short. However, you can find fairly cheap extenders, which I have one here. I've actually even uh, colored this one silver, or this area silver, so that I can know which way is up on the extender, because this is definitely not official, but it's just basically straight wire through. Um, there's no crossing, there's no fancy, um, or anything like that for an extension. Now, <clears throat> originally this system was meant to compete with the NES. And, you know, I get it. Um, it definitely was not built to, to compete against the, the other 16-bit systems or anything like that. Um, and there's a whole big debate on whether or not the TurboGrafx-16 TurboGrafx is 16-bit or not. Um, but it does show a beautiful amount of color array. Now, while I've got this controller in my hand, see this cable right here? This cable uh, releases a gas slowly over time. Now, the, this gas was inserted into the rubber coating for this cable to uh, make it pliable. And when the gas releases, when it's pressed up against plastic, uh, it will warp that plastic. It's called cable burn. I've said this multiple times on other people's YouTube channels and in comments and stuff like that. And <clears throat> you know what? It's real. You definitely need to look out for it. There are various uh, cables that can produce cable burn. Uh, here's my RCA jack. I've actually got a, a ferrite choke right here that I've looped through and stuff. And <clears throat> I mainly do that just to keep any kind of interference coming through the cable. Because, you know, this thing is kind of old and it can produce some interference. Here is the power adapter for the unit when it's hooked up to the CD drive. I'll give you a little shot of what that looks like. Instead of 11 volts, it's 12 volts and 24 watts. Um, it's kind of a lot, but you got to realize that it's powering two things. It's not just powering one thing, it's powering a system and the dock and the CD drive and stuff. Um, now, what's necessary to get a TurboGrafx-16 up and running? Um, well, you need the base unit and you need a power supply. Um, I would definitely prefer going with a OEM power supply, but you know, you could possibly find some aftermarket ones as long as you're Getting one that's you know has the right ratings and is and is uh, of good quality. Um, now the controllers, uh, I would definitely you know try to find one at least one controller when you're buying the system. Um, the the video output, I mean, you, you can hook up a regular Nintendo RF adapter to the RF adapter to the side there, or you know um, you can use RCA jacks if you if you've got the ability to get RCA jacks. Uh, speaking of RCA jacks, uh, there is something called the Turbo Booster. It does not simply just tap the, the back pins on the base system. There is circuitry based in this thing. I, I know I used to own one and I took it apart. I don't have it anymore to show you, but it is not simply just tapping those back lines. Uh, there is circuitry to change certain values and lower uh, lower the composite line so that it's not coming out of uh, coming out of the back of the unit at such a high amplitude. Um, I think it's amplitude, but the, the signal's just too hot raw. Um, then there is the uh, Turbo Booster Plus, and it also attaches to the back 
um, but it's more flat. And it, all it really does is the same thing that the turbo tap, or not turbo tap, the uh, turbo booster does, except it also includes internal memory. The CD drop dock on this thing also includes internal memory for those games that want to use it and make and, and make use of uh, saving things. Um, like this thing and the Sega CD were the two things, the two early CD systems that had uh, SRAM chips in them to make to make uh, you know game saves and stuff like that. Um, not much of anything else is really required. It's it's a fairly simple system to collect for, but it becomes expensive to maintain. Um, and you'll notice that there's only one controller port here on the front, and that was by design, unfortunately. I do have a turbo tap. I can't put my hands on it right now, but it basically takes this and splits it out in, into five, and it kind of looks like the controller a little bit. Um, <clears throat> it just has, it's thicker and has, and has five ports running along down here. Um, but that's mainly just for using it for uh, being able to do things like play multiplayer, which there are games that go up to five players. I think Bomberman is one of them. Um, otherwise, this is a really great machine. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I was a very early adopter of this, of the TurboGrafx-16, and I absolutely love it. Um, I bought this thing from Toys R Us brand new back when it came out, um, and... I never regretted it. I, I love this machine absolutely to death. Uh, for all of you out there you know, watching, I hope that you can get your hands on one of these things um, for a decent price. Right now, I, I do believe that the hardware is a little bit on the inflated side as of the recording of this video. But, I mean, that's it, guys, other than the, the hard shell that it comes in and stuff, and that only comes with the CD drive. That's it. Um, this is my TurboGrafx-16 and me trying my best to uh, help you, you know, collect for it. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.